This video is about the proportional reasoning section of a lab report. Proportional reasoning is going to be a really gigantic part of this class moving forward and there's a lot to say about it and a very specific method for dealing with it that we're going to introduce a little bit later in the year. For now I'm just going to give you the basics of how to fill out this one section of a lab report. Basically the goal is to understand what will happen to your DV if you perform certain mathematical functions on your IV. So if your IV doubles, what will your DV do? If your IV triples, what will your DV do? If you divide your IV by 2, what will happen to the DV? So we're going to see how we can figure that out. Before beginning, you should fill in each blank spot with IV and DV with the names of your experiments IV and DV. So I'll use a time and position experiment as an example. That's pretty straightforward, so we're just trying to understand if we do something to time, what will happen to the position as a result. What you fill in for the question mark sections will depend on the pattern of your graph. To figure out what to write, you should follow these steps. You should start by writing your equation for the pattern of your graph with your variables. Next to the equation, write a new equation where you perform the function on the IV. As an example, if you triple the IV, write it as 3 times your IV. Then carry out the math so that you have the original equation for dv multiplied by a constant, and that constant tells you what's happening to the dv. This sounds pretty complicated, but if I go through step by step, I think you're going to see that it's actually pretty simple. So let's imagine that we've identified our graph as linear. We've looked up at the patterns posters and seen that there's a linear pattern to the graph. So I know that the equation for linear graphs is dv is equal to some constant times iv. In this case, position is equal to some constant m times time. So if I triple the IV, I want to know what happens to DV. That's one of the questions in the proportional reasoning section. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to get some new position as a result of multiplying our time by 3. We're tripling the time to see what happens to the position. And if I isolate the original equation, the original equation is just position is equal to m times time. And now I have m times 3 times time. So if I pull out that 3, I've now isolated the original equation in this new equation. Because I can see that m times time is equal to the original position that I had before tripling this number, I can see that the new position of the object is going to be 3 times the original position. So that means that the new position has also tripled. So if you triple the time, the position will triple. With linear equations, this is pretty straightforward. You can see that if I have the time specifically, if I divide the time by 1 half and isolate that, you can see that the position is also being multiplied by 1 half. So the position will also be halved. We can go on to a different type of function. Let's say that instead you've identified the graph on Logger Pro as being a quadratic graph using the equations posters that we have. So a quadratic graph behaves like this. That's the base equation. The dv is equal to some constant times the iv squared. So let's see what happens if we triple the iv. So there's some new position that's equal to a constant times 3 times time squared. That all has to be inside the parentheses because the iv itself is being tripled and the whole iv is being squared. And when I have two numbers inside of a square like that, I have to carry out the square to both sides. So I get that the new position is equal to a times 9 times time squared. So I can isolate a times time squared and see that the new position is equal to the original position times 9. So I would say if you triple the time, the position is now multiplied by 9 if this is a quadratic pattern. And I can try halving it as well. So I can multiply the time by 1 half. Carrying out that square gets me 1 quarter, 0.25. Isolating a times time squared gets me that the new position is equal to the original position times 0.25. So that's the same as dividing by 4. So that's what will happen to the position if you have the time if this is a quadratic graph. Another example, we can imagine that you've identified it as being inverse, and this is the pattern that inverse graphs follow. The dv is equal to some constant times 1 over the iv. So if you triple the iv, this is what happens. You can see that I've now isolated position times one-third, so the new position will be one-third as big as the original if you triple the time. And if you have the time, you can see that the new position will be multiplied by two. 
which is the same as being doubled. Just one thing to note, if you're working with a linearized graph, and if you don't know what that means yet, we're going to talk about it, you should answer the proportional reasoning section about the original graph, not the linearized graph. And that's what you have to know about proportional reasoning.